Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now for the nation's sharpest opinion. The world is on edge, ladies and gentlemen. Israel says it will extract a price from Iran when the time is right. America has increased its deployment and moved troops to the Middle East. Iran's attack on Israel, whether in retaliation of the attack on its consulate in Damascus or in retaliation towards a trigger they have waited for, has destabilized the entire region. As I see it, this is a significant moment because Iran, which has through time since its establishment as the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, never got into a direct escalation with Israel. And in that case, this is a first. But to think that Netanyahu will not go with the advice of his war cabinet to respond, to think that he will cave in despite the US being very proactive since the attack, is also hoping against hope. He's also under political pressures, domestic pressure. My view is that there will be an Israeli response in some form. But the larger concern is whether this moment will trigger a World War III. Because let's remember, both World War I and World War II began as regional conflagrations between nations. World War I was between two kingdoms before becoming a full-blown international conflict. My view is that we cannot rule out an escalation. We have to watch extremely closely because on both sides are very, very militarized and very, very determined nations. Let's take a look. Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. It fired around 350 projectiles at Israel, bringing in a new phase of tension, uncertainty and confrontation in the Middle East. The attack was in response to a suspected Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus earlier this month. اینه که قدردان ارزش اقدام مسئولانه و متناسب جمهوری اسلامی ایران باشند و به جای انتخاب الفاظ و عبارات نامتناسب hours after the attack 17 indians on board israeli linked vessel were captured by iran yesterday night uh, i spoke uh, to my iranian counterpart uh, we we are uh, making the uh, the point to the iranian government that uh, these people should be released that they should not be detained you know i i would absolutely press for these people to come back to india israel has accused iran of spreading terror on saturday the iran itself uh, took uh, you know, overtook a Portuguese boat. Uh, and on that Portuguese boat, because it's an international trading route, there are 17 Indian sailors on it that are now being held by Iran. They're terrorizing the region. They're terrorizing, you know, other countries as well. India shares deep strategic ties with Israel and Iran for decades, and it has been able to balance between the two sides. Israel happens to be one of the biggest defense suppliers to India. The partnership between the two countries has upscaled ever since Prime Minister Modi came to power. On the other hand, India's relationship with Iran is older. The Islamic nation, one of India's prime oil supplier. Is the Israel-Iran war a new headache for India? Is India caught in the middle again? Let's debate. I have uh, with me the deputy spokesperson of the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Israel, uh, Alex Gandler, with me to start tonight. Mr. Gandler, in this case, how do you view things panning out? Uh, you know, your, your technology has been very effective against the Iranian missile attack. But, uh, you know, the Iranians are unlikely to let go. 
Uh, they are also a very determined nation, very militarized. Uh, what options are you looking at if you were to look at the next one week or two days, two weeks, for example? Well, first of all, Arnab, uh, Shalom from Jerusalem. Um, yes, I'm standing here on uh, on my balcony, to be honest. I'm standing here exactly where I stood on Saturday morning at around 1 uh, in the morning, 1.40 in the morning, uh, looking upwards at the sky and seeing projectiles shot over Jerusalem. Uh, this was definitely an escalation, the first time ever in uh, the history of the relations between Israel and Iran, and we did have uh, good relations in the past prior to the Islamic Revolution, uh, that Iran has launched uh, an attack, a direct attack from its territory uh, to Israel. Luckily, uh, we are protected by layers of defense and also by layers of strategical diplom diplomatic defense uh, with our partners uh, internationally and uh, regionally. Looking at the future, we're keeping all our options open at the moment. Uh, we are listening to all sides. We're talking with our American friends who are a strategic pa partner, uh, and we're thinking about uh, uh, how we should respond to this. A response will be needed uh, because such an attack is unprecedented. Uh, not only for Israel, this is probably the largest uh, bombardments of aerial drones and ballistic missiles on any country, 300 altogether, some of them uh, very large ICBMs. Uh, so such an attack cannot go unchallenged. Uh, two follow-ups. Uh, first, Alex, you are saying that this cannot go unchallenged. But the Iranian attack was in response to the Israeli airstrikes destroying the Iranian embassy's consular annex in Damascus. Uh, I think that happened on the first and they, it killed or wounded everyone inside. So Iran says that this bombardment of theirs is only a response to the April 1st airstrike. So in a way, it's 1-1. One, one. Why take this further? Well, first of all, I can't comment or, or relate to any such bombardment. Uh, from my understanding, it wasn't an... Uh, a consular annex, as someone who has served in diplomatic missions abroad, I'm very well aware of how you uh, describe a consulate or an embassy. To my understanding, that building uh, was a uh, a building that wasn't part of the Iranian embassy. Uh, uh, neither, uh, uh, but one one is not something that uh, we're counting. Uh, I don't think that any nation across the world would have uh, uh, stood still if its uh, land was targeted with 300 missiles, drones, ICBMs, cruise missiles, and so on. Uh, this is an unproportional response or attack by Iran. Um, by the way, in the past, if we're mentioning diplomatic missions, please allow me to uh, talk a bit about history. Uh, in 1990, Iran bombed uh, the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. Um, in the 2000s, uh, most uh, Indian viewers might probably remember uh, the explosion in one of our diplomats' car, injuring his wife, who is uh, receiving treatment to this day. Uh, in 1994, the explosion of the Amiya building in Buenos Aires as well. And the 2012 uh, explosion that killed Israeli tourists uh, in Bulgaria, They're all carried by Iran and its proxies, uh, Hezbollah. Alex, do you think Israel is taking on everyone together? You have a situation, you know, already vis-a-vis uh, -vis the situation in Gaza. You have an escalating and long-drawn uh, response from Israel there. Now you're taking on Iran. They say that in conflict, you should not take on all your enemies and potential enemies in one go. But that's what Israel seems to be doing. Yes, yeah, so first of all, you're right. Uh, opening many fronts as strategically against what Clausewitz said, and I think many generals understand that as well. But let's analyze this for a second. Are we opening different fronts or is it the same front? When we're talking about Iran, uh, the way Iran has been operating since the Iran-Iraq war, uh, their strategic understanding was not to fight a war on their soil. Hence, the, they developed a strategy of using proxies. 
So let's talk about the Middle East and what surrounds Israel. Uh, to the north of us in Lebanon, we have Hezbollah. Uh, to the uh, east, Syria and Iraq, we have Hezbollah and Hezbollah, uh, Tahrir and other factions. You have them also in Afghanistan and Pakistan, where Iran is uh, operating proxies. Uh, Houthis in Yemen and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas are also funded by Iran in Gaza. So uh, if there is a war and there has been a cold war with Iran for many decades now, it has become a bit warmer. Uh, the fact that they have decided to bomb Israel uh, and shoot all those rockets at us is just an escalation on their part. Uh, we're not looking at uh, different uh, uh, fronts. We're talking about one front, about Iran, and it's not just Israel. Uh, you saw probably uh, that... Uh, during Saturday, a coalition of nations stood up to Iran and what it is doing. It's not just against Israel. What we're seeing is something, uh, belligerency against the entire world. We are just the victim of this specific action. But at the end of the day, the destabilization is all around the world. Uh, you've spoken about uh, the ship that was uh, captured by Iranian special forces carrying 17 Indian sailors. And much more, Houthis attacking Indians, yes. ships uh, passing next to Yemen, and so on and so forth. This is uh, Iran waging a war against many nations, not just against Israel. Uh, Alex, thank you very much. We'll keep following up from Republic. Thank you very much. That's Alex Gandler, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm also joined by General Bakshi right now and uh, Colonel Jonathan Conricus of the Israeli Defense Force, IDF. Along with them is uh, Fatemi Karim Khan, senior journalist live from Tehran in Iran, and Babak Herawi, journalist and political analyst of the Middle East and Iran. He's joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, Babak, if I can start with you, you heard uh, the deputy spokesperson of the Israeli Foreign Ministry saying there that, uh, that Iran is opening up fronts, it's much more than it seems. It is not a response to the April 1st attack. He seems to suggest that this is uh, the Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthi, everybody and their, uh, whoever they were proxies for coming out in front and taking on Israel directly. Uh, Babak, where do you see this going and your response to what you may have just heard? Uh, hi, so everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. What is happening right now is, the, is another scene of a play uh, began 45 years ago. This is nothing new. Every other year, some such clash through proxies to different countries in Argentina, here and there, has been going on. And the problem at this moment is not Iran, but this is the Islamic Republic regime running the country in Iran. See what I mean? If we cannot separate these two elements, we will never get to the right response at this moment. Any coalition at this time, join to, uh, come together, put all the efforts together, can topple and overthrow such regime, which in its own last election, the turnaround was almost 5%. See what I mean? Is an unwanted child. If we can do that without even shooting a missile, without even killing a person, we can bring peace back to the Middle East. This is what, how I look at it. Okay, Babak, uh, uh, before I go to Colonel Jonathan Conricus, uh, Fatimi, 350 missiles and drones fired on Israel. Iran says this was a retaliation to a single attack in Damascus. But the scale of the attack has surprised people. Is Iran looking at a full-fledged war? Does Iran see itself as the leader not. of the Muslim world against Israel? Of course not. Yes. Of course not. Nobody here, nobody looking for a war. Nobody here looking for a war. Please be careful about your words. We are not the nation who is looking for a war. We didn't start anything here. It was the Israeli army who, who destroyed a building, who destroyed a diplomatic building, who killed several of Iranian people outside our country, outside Iran. It is not a, uh, there is not, uh, there is, it is not a problem of 
uh, who they are working for or what was the names or what was their, their relation to the government, they kill some of Iranian nationality people. And they, there should be a revenge. There should be a reaction. There should be a, a, um, an answer. There should be a reaction to these kind of things. Uh, we cannot uh, just sit here and see what they are doing against our people. Our uh, Islamic Republic government is not something um, uh, something um, against Iran, against Iranian people. It may do something that we do not like here or there, but it has a rule. It has a. Uh, it is. Um, it is the. It is the. It is the definition of a government to protect their people. And if Israeli, if Israeli people are not happy with what is happening in the in their country, they have to uh, they have to show this. They have to go uh, and uh, show their uh, their disagreement with this uh, politics. No, I'm just surprised at the scale of the response. Colonel Jonathan, let me draw you in here. Why do you think Israel has come out in the op uh, Iran has come out in the open directly? So far, of course, there were the prox proxies, the Hezbollah, Houthi. They were working through proxies, but now there's a direct attack. Uh, what what is the what is the strategic intention here? And what is is Israel going to say? Okay, we are going to hold ourselves back, or is it going to wait for timing? Can it afford to escalate it further? and take on everybody at the same time. Right. Thank you for having me. So those are two distinct uh, questions. I'll start with the second one, with what Israel is going to do. I think what Israel is going to do is respond uh, at a timing, location, and uh, intensity of Israel's choosing. It doesn't have to be immediate, and it doesn't have to be against specific targets. Uh, Israel has a very wide and diversified toolbox when it comes to dealing with Iran. Up until now, yes, we have been fighting their proxies. The Iranians very cowardly have been sending forward Palestinians, Lebanese, Yemenites, Syrians, and what have you, in order to fight against Israel. Uh, we are still busy fighting them, by the way. And I can tell you that I myself was surprised that the Iranians actually found the courage to step out of the convenience of the shadows and actually attack Israel straight on. Their attack was a failure, and we were able to successfully defend and intercept more than 99% of all of the incoming missiles, drones, and rockets that were fired from Iran, which I am not sure that the guest from Iran is aware of, because this is being censored in Tehran by the oppressive media, or the oppressive regime against the media. But bottom line is that I think that we are we will see in the imminent future, not maybe tonight and not maybe tomorrow night, an Israeli response because obviously such an attack against Israel cannot go unchecked, especially not when it's from a regime that for 44 years have been chanting and forcing their people to chant death to Israel, death to America, death to the UK. I don't know if they've been saying bad things about India as well, but I know for certain that it's been a lot of death wishes to other countries. Of course, we cannot let this slide and we must respond to this type of aggression. Uh, uh, General Bakshi, where do you see this going forward now? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Arnab, there has been a paradigm shift in the situation in the Middle East. As the other uh, speakers have very rightly highlighted, so far Iran was fighting through its proxies, the three H's, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis and the Shia militias in, Sir uh, in Syria and Iraq. Now it has uh, chosen to fight directly and uh, from what we learn from Iranian sources, they are saying it is in retaliation for the attack on their uh, consulate compound in Syria, where, uh, you know, a number of their top military officials have been killed, total 11 have been killed in that particular strike, and therefore they wanted to sort of, uh, you know, the United States did a lot to try and deter them, to make them recalculate, recalibre, you know, the, uh, the American Central Command Chief, uh, Corilla, he personally came down to Israel, another aircraft carrier was sent in to deter Iran. The fact is, Iran has not been deterred. 
and about 320 to 350 there are various estimates some 170 drone strikes shahid class then there were the cruise missiles about 35 and then there were about 120 uh, ballistic missiles which have been launched uh, iran says it has struck the two air bases from where uh, the Novavim air base in southern Israel from which it claims that Israel had launched the air attack onto its embassy. So that base has been hit and they are claiming the major damage. The Israelis tell us that the damage has been very slight. One girl, I understand, poor girl has been killed and about uh, 12 people wounded uh, total in this strike, right? It came in three waves. The Israeli air defense was superb. It is one of the best in the world. And it was aided by the Americans and the British and the French who used their fighter aircraft to shoot down the drones as they came. Israel claims that the drones were just a decoy and they uh, have hit the targets that they wanted. They got through despite these defenses and they are saying that 1.3 billion dollars have been spent by Israel in this defense whereas they have spent very little in, uh, in uh, turn but they are saying they have finished and the next move is on Israel. Now to my reckoning Israel will respond though the Americans are putting heavy pressure let's be quite straightforward they do not want israel to escalate they are saying you were able to shoot down 97 to 98% of the projectiles and therefore you should take it as a victory and call it off because if you uh, give a retaliatory strike there will be uh, follow up strikes from iran and once this escalatory spiral starts there is no saying where it will end it's extremely dangerous, very, very dangerous situation there. And therefore, uh, you know, like our external affairs ministers just spoke to you, there is need for calm, there is need for patience. Uh, I personally think Israel will retaliate because of its own public opinion uh, pressure. But uh, that uh, based upon American pressure, no, but that may take a covert form. They have done covert attacks uh, earlier. On to yeah, Israel. but you know they have done the stuck but, but, attacks but, but on their general Bakshi, facilities. General, and general Bakshi, fact, but yes, general Bakshi, I yes. think I think I think what uh, what Iran is not clear about, and Fatimi don't mind my saying it, you are on very uncertain ground here. And and Fatimi Karim Khan in Tehran, I, I'll bring in my own take here. Fighting a proxy war and fighting a real war are very different. You, as a country, you are experts at fighting proxy wars. Everything for you is a proxy war. Hezbollah is a proxy war. Your support to the Hezbollah is a proxy war. Your support to the Hamas is a proxy war. You may have been celebrating when the 7th October attack happened on Israel. It was a proxy war. Israel did not attack Tehran. But Tehran was behind the attack on the 7th of October. What you are doing by encouraging piracy in the open seas with the Houthis, one minute, with the Houthis is a proxy war. You tell the Houthis to fire ballistic missiles at Israeli resorts. You, you tell the Houthis to capture ships. Even the Indian Navy had to respond once or twice and three times and teach the Houthis a lesson. My point being to you, Fatih Mahaji, is that you are using Syria, you are using Hamas, Houthi, Hezbollah, but you're not fighting a war yourself. Now you're saying we'll fight the war ourselves. Are you ready because your I'm first attack on Israel has failed? So I, I don't know I whether it will work and I want you to tell Babak, for example, uh, I, I, why, I why you would, no, you know, this Sir, is your proxy. I am, war. Not, a is your. For, I am not a spokesperson for the Everything. Iranian government. I am not a spokesperson for anyone. I just spoke yeah, but, a, a professional journalism yeah. idea here. So I'm not speaking about what Iran is going to do or what it had, had done before. What I'm saying is, Iran as a country has every right to protect its people outside and inside the country. We have 
seen several terrorist attacks from Israelis inside and outside are you, Iran against are you, our scientists. Against are you protecting our your nuclear... people by? Are you are you are you protecting your people by? One minute. I'll get Babak Harabi into this. Babak is Iran protecting its people by supporting the Hamas, by supporting Absolutely and financing the Houthis. Not. By supporting Absolutely piracy in the open not. seas. They are killing their own Baba people. Baba Kharavi, responding to Fatemi. They are starving their own people by just sending the hard-earned currency to all these terrorist groups from Africa, uh, Boko Haram, uh, name it, Kataev. In, in, in Iraq, there are three types of, of these groups. Uh, and Najaev uh, and Kataev, whatever. You go to Yemen, you go to Syria. War in Syria was financed by the Islamic Republic. Okay? There is a reason when the inflation in Iran right now at this moment is over 10,000%. What is the reason? Because all the hard earned money is being pumping through all the channels to the terrorists to purchase. To buy arm, to buy like ammunition, to buy all the equipment, explosives, and kill innocent people. It's as simple as that. There's nothing around it. Sir, Islamic Republic is Iran, not sir, protecting you its blame citizens. You cannot Iran for whatever happened in and outside the regime. It is not. It, there is not. It, Iran is not responsible for whatever terroristic a, attack inside and outside. It, that's okay, that's maybe what she there said. Is that's some not type. the reality. There is some type, that's but not you the cannot, reality, ma'am. No, no, no. This is the regime's propaganda. You're repeating. This is the parrot style. No. When Iran is financing Bassem Soleimani, was the head of head of financier of all the terrorist groups in uh, Iraq. All Shia Muslims, when your own minister said, uh, at the time of Saddam Hussein, we just purchased thousands of bombs. His interview is out there. And we distributed all over southern Iraq before the war. This is terrorism. This is spreading terrorism. This is bedding for terrorism, for killing are innocent people. Speak about the, the, are we going to speak about what is happening right now between Iran and Israel? Right Dubai, now, or we are going right to now let me tell you. Why do you go to a consulate? You tell me what is a consulate. Why a person would go to a consulate to obtain visa, to get legal help, to get uh, help to go back to his country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What for are the high-ranking IRGC no generals right are doing in that consulate? The country. What what are they doing there? What are they cooking there? Is, is it not terror? The reason is Syria is let, not let, our let, country, let man. Sorry, let me finish. Let me finish. You are not answering. For whatever the reason, Iranian nationalities are outside the country or inside. For whatever reason, no other country has the right to Hold kill on them. A second. Do you know what IRGC stands for? IRGC. Do you know what what does it stand for? Huh? Islamic Republic Guard Corps. There's no Iran in it. Okay. IRGC, the moment established, its name is Sepahe, Pastorane, Engelobe Islam. No is Iran. Not, about Iran's not even in the name. The how, how come is not you about call Iran's Iran's I'd like to, Let me just get in Colonel, oh, Colonel Jonathan in this, please. Colonel Jonathan, if I can if I can get you into this now. Colonel Jonathan, Colonel Jonathan, we were waiting for I mean the world is waiting for the situation in the Middle East to settle down. And this is going to cause a lot of global concern. Therefore, the Americans will put in pressure as well. This is not good for the global economy if this conflict truly escalates and spins out of control. So have the Americans managed to convince you to pull back a little? You can make the statements but not take it any further. Yeah, um, I think that uh, sometimes, you know, when you have a bad tooth, uh, you need to endure some pain in order to get it out. And the fact that you're going to endure some pain with the dentist doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It is a necessary minor evil in order to deal with a bad situation. 
And in this metaphor, the bad situation is Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, its actions, its state sponsoring of terror, its belligerent activities across the entire Middle East, specifically against Israel, but not only in Israel, overturning local uh, regimes in Iraq, uh, strifing uh, sectarian violence in Syria and in Lebanon, and fueling civil war in Yemen, and of course funding terrorist organizations in Gaza. So the fact that many people prefer quiet now, I think, you know, when you have, when, when there's a problem, when your tooth is aching, you don't want quiet. You want to take care of the issue and you want to make sure that it doesn't become any worse. That's where we are now. That's where Israel is. And for all of the people who are saying, telling Israel that you must or that you should exercise caution and restraint, we have been extremely restrained for decades. For 44 years, the uh, mullahs in Iran have been screaming death to Israel. And for many decades, they have been arming and equipping terror organizations against us. Many Israeli civilians have died at the hands of Iranian weapons provided to uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and others. And I think that enough is enough. Israel needs to break free of this a noose of terror organizations that Iran has funded and placed along our borders. And it is high time that we take the opportunity now when finally Iran has summoned the courage to step out of the shadows to actually confront Iran. There are many targets in Iran and there are many things that Israel can do. And what I would think that Israel will be doing is either going after the nuclear program or going after Iran's capacity to, to continue to fund these malign terrorist activities across the Middle East, so as their sourcing equipment, for instance, ports where uh, oil is uh, exported from and petrochemical products are exported from, by the way, violating international sanctions. Um, and maybe that will be a target. But whatever happens, I do not think that Israel will let this slide. Whatever countries and organizations, and even our closest friends will tell us and ask us to do, I think that once Iran fired 350 rockets and missiles, we cross that Rubicon, and this aggression must be met with a firm, clear Middle Eastern response. Well, this, this uh, without doubt, uh, is going to escalate. Uh, viewers, for those thinking of this as new, look at it another way. What is happening now is only a formalization of what has been a battle ongoing between Israel and Iran. It is just that Iran has worked through proxies so far and now it is coming out in the open. But when it does, governments and militaries get involved, so it takes on a very different dimension from when Iran can blame it on non-state actors.